Hi, hi everybody, it's the CCJ T Amateur Hour production volumes. Go to die. Go to die. Uh, over there is CC. And over there is JT. And you can see that we're ready for spring. Cubs! Space Go Cubs! Call. Cubs! You can uh, also... About this time of year, we would be thinking about the spring oh, training trip. definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we're almost at the end of January now. Today is January 28th, 2024. 28th. When did that happen? Okay. I know, but uh, as you can see... We are back in our Dungeon of Doom studio. Yeah, we're we're getting ready to spend thousands of dollars to make it even safer. Right. Whoa! Because um, we uh, had another, yet another pump incident, which for those of folks who remember, last year and about 10 years ago, we had major flooding down here. You know, bunk water, water, uh, water down Probably to... Probably at least a foot deep. Yeah, so, um, so we're looking forward to saying hello to our friends at Hoffman Plumbing. Who are probably going to be uh, doing a major, um, major reconfiguration Trenching of our project. drainage system, yes. but it's uh, so it's thousands of dollars to buy our books, buy them all, Please. buy ten thousand two hundred and fifty-seven of them, or more. That would be a good yeah. starting number, but that's kind of our joke right now. Is when we check the daily sales numbers, I, my my thought is always ten thousand two hundred fifty-seven. So, you know, tell your friends and family that, uh, you know, that, you know, our part base, but okay, you, uh, yeah, spend I, your money on important things, but if no, you happen to buy our books, we would appreciate it. It would help because we are going to be spending thousands of dollars. For anybody who does have a basement with a sump pump, you will know that the appropriate installation includes having pipes trenched outside the house and a French drain system installed. So there will be small heavy equipment in our yard coming probably fairly soon to get that all straightened out but we'll finally hopefully have the pump set up so that it won't keep burning out every year yeah um if you are listening to this the podcast uh we're going to apologize right now because we've been having technical issues with the podcast all day and so if there's pauses or jumps or anything like that we did our best uh but as we say production values go die i know there's really no excuse for it but we just technology. It's, it's just it's just technology, yeah. and so uh, so apologize right up in advance. Well, and just to expand on that, it's not just us because you may have noticed you're not wearing yours today, but new glasses. Yeah. <laughs> so we went to the optician to get new glasses, and they had their little pad that they were trying to use to do the eye measurements and everything, and they were having a similar problem where you know the internet just wasn't wanting to connect and then. It's a thing. It's not just us. Yeah. Um, so we're and we're gonna have to speak up a little bit here because the microphone, according to this, is having some problems. So we're, we're you know we really Hello. shouldn't do this until we <laughs> we really shouldn't do this until we have like five cups of coffee. But uh, um, okay. Um, so just very briefly, we noticed that recently in the trend in our podcast and our broadcast is that we've been very business oriented. Yes. We've been very business oriented because we because we did expand across the five platforms, we've seen uh we've seen greater success, financial success. You know, yes. it's it's like you know, it's like um, you know, here here I am and um I'm going to take a step to uh Los Angeles. <laughs> that's how that so small step. small step so it, it's um it's that kind of but it's it, it's exciting to see that little tip so we got very business oriented with our podcast um but we're also writers helping writers yep. so we're going to do the we're going to do a little quick business and then we're going to get into a subject which uh, is near and dear to both of our hearts yep. and on the business side um we have had we've gotten into the habit of regular meetings yes ceo editor-in-chief minions <laughs> Ch chief minions multiple personalities <laughs> diabolical you diabolical me so um multiple minions and one thing that we've uh, we're doing is we're expanding our marketing so if you happen to see uh happen to see any of our marketing in the in, out in the wild if you could drop us a line appreciate it we're not going to say what it is right now uh because we're still experimenting and still feeling around but we're doing two major efforts for us anyway and we're going to go uh we'll get uh, more from that We'll talk more about that later, uh, but if you do see us out in the wild, you know, we'd appreciate just a quick note or something just saying, hey, ooh, we saw you. <laughs> yes, we would like to know because obviously we do get the analytics telling us if there have been views versus click-throughs versus whatever. 
sales, but the um, it's nice to hear from people because then we kind of know where and who saw it and what they were doing and things like that. So if you could let us know, we would appreciate it. Yep. And one more quick thing, um, which may, will, may be a topic for later, excuse me, sorry about that, is um, uh, Microsoft Publisher. Now, Microsoft gets a lot of heat. Microsoft gets a lot of heat, as it deserves, because um, it wasn't designed to be user-friendly. It was designed to be functional. Um, and so, uh, and so, whereas Max, which we have one, uh, definitely designed to be user friendly, then functional. So there's, you know, there's differences. But uh, in Publisher, which is the main application we use to build our covers, uh, uh, we discovered this week how to use it to as a as a template for more covers. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be more hard copies of our books uh, using that template. The sequel to Sheriff. Right. Should be coming soon. Yeah, actually, it's the uh, proof is coming today. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, and then we're just going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, go through all our Amazon books and do that. And then go through all the Barnes & Noble. <sighs> Barnes & Noble covers are a lot more interesting than uh, Amazon covers. All of the multiple jobs that JT has been doing. This is a large part of it. So it's been a struggle for the, the balancing act between the business and the writing, right. the creative side. And on the on the creative side, uh, the, the the books continue. Um, yes. And I'm just gonna just stop there because you know, we, Same you know, thing. They, they, <laughs> when you when you've been working on a book for you know since uh, lockdown, and you keep saying that it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I can sort of get get the idea that some people's just sort of brains turn off. It's like, oh, we got it. When is it coming out? So we'll just say it's coming. It is still in progress. Still in progress. Okay. Yes. Um, Okay, so let's talk about something fun. Let's talk about something fun. And um, uh, we're a couple of weeks out from Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. So we're going to talk about love, 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 love. Okay. Love, love, love. Okay, okay. stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. love. All you okay. need is love. Okay, so, um, so we're going to take interesting positions here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about someone who writes... Romance. Yes. Someone who likes to write romance. Right. Whereas somebody who writes, you know, ro uh, right, has, a, has a, you know, has a book that happens to have romance. Right. And so, uh, you know, the pros and cons. We're not going to go too deep in this because we, we haven't really thought too deep about this. No. Because if we had, you know, then this wouldn't be production values for it to go down. But um, it, we did do a romance together. That one. From we did Tundra do a romance to together that was made to be a, a romance. romance. Yes. Um, and then uh, I've written some books that have romance in it. Yes. Which is actually. Actually, this one kind mm -hmm. of is an interesting spin on romance. Mm -hmm. Very adult oriented, not safe for work, but there are romantic elements. They're just not along the lines of this type of romance. Right. And the, if you're more interested in the, gee, the one over your shoulder there, no, no, no. Emma yeah. Parks. Yeah, Emma Parks, which, yes. has, which has romance Definitely. in it, but it wasn't the main point. Right. So I sort of do it as, a, you know, as a, you know, I add it to the plot. Yes. So, um, okay, so let's just hit the basics. Let's just hit the basics. Um, why do you, why do you like to write romance? And what is your ideal, uh, do we want to do a movie or a book? Let's do a movie okay. because it's something that people can instantly relate to. Yes. What is your ideal romantic movie? Mm. So, okay, but maybe think about uh, think about that while you say, why do you like to do romance? Well, having grown up reading a lot of romance, and my experience with romance goes back to reading really 1950s romances in high school because my school library was about 20 years behind the times. And the... Uh, the romances at that time were very sweet. There was a series of books called The Twins, and it, they were twin sisters who would be out dating and things like that. So a lot of the romances I read were teenagers very early in the relationship where it's all very new and exciting, and you're learning about each other, and they're not ready to commit to a long-term relationship yet. That evolved into the Barbara Cartland type of romance, which I cannot read anymore because they are the sickly sweet romance where oh. you get maybe a kiss on the very, very last page of the book, which modern audiences probably don't like. I don't hear much about Barbara Cartland anymore. So mine were very sweet, uh, innocent type of romances when I first started reading them. 
And, you know, as a teenager, that is something that, at least to me, it really resonated because I hadn't had any dating relationships yet. So the idea of that new, exciting time in a relationship was something that I was really drawn to. What would that feel like? How exciting would that be? What kind of person would I be attracted to? And that's why I really started being drawn to romances. I read other books, of course. Um, you know, there were the books that were the classic literature that was assigned in high school, a lot of science fiction, but romance is what really, I don't know, it's in my core, I guess, at this point now, because it's just something that I picked up so very early in life. And over time, my tastes in romance have changed, but I tend to prefer romance. And I have also written science fiction. So, you know, it's, it just, I like the relationship aspect of writing. Okay, so the, it's the, uh, the fresh getting to know each other kind of thing that appeals to you in a romance. And yes. so, um, you like to, and this is as a writer, um, you like to write stories about how that is found and developed and yes. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it starts with the traditional meet cute. So something happens where these two people meet, for example, in our real life relationship, we met working in a fast food restaurant. That was our meat cute. He put pickles in my ketchup on the sandwich station, you know, that kind of thing. And that brings you into the story. So from that meeting, why did we end up being a couple? And that's kind of when you're writing a romance. Um, it can be two people from very different backgrounds meeting. I've been reading a series on um, online on a, one of the news sites where they're talking about travel romances where people have randomly met while they're traveling and they end up having a long-term relationship and they have a lot of those meet cute type of situations they may be from opposite sides of the oh excuse me sides of the world but for some reason they are drawn together and the progression from the meeting to the actual for a romance it's either a happily ever after or a happily for now um, usually you don't want to end a romance or it's not considered, I think, a true romance if the relationship fizzles out by the end. So it's just the development of the relationship that I really enjoy. Okay, and so if, what, what's, if you were to pick a movie that were to sort of encapsulate uh, some of what you said, uh, do you have one in your back pocket? No. Well, what, what's go, a comfort movie? I could go back to Romancing the Stone yeah. where basically she ends up She's an author, so Joan Wilder is an author. If you don't, if you're not familiar with *Romancing the Stone*, she's very um, agoraphobic. She doesn't leave her apartment much, and she's writing this character, Jack Colton. She ends up, her sister, for some reason, ends up doing these adventures where it's really dangerous. Her sister gets kidnapped, so she tries to go and save her sister. In the meantime, she meets a man who is very much like her character, Jack Colton. So. Um, they hate each other basically from the beginning. He thinks she's spoiled and she has no clue about real life because she's been so cloistered for so long. Whereas he's been out having all these adventures and it's a case of opposites attract and she ends up falling for this man that she's basically been writing for her whole career. So that is one of my comfort romance movies. Mm -hmm. A more recent example of that would be The Lost City, which is what we saw before we wrote from Tundra to Tiara. And they admit that The Lost City is a remake of it The Romancing remake. Stone. Yes, so the situation there is a little different because you have the author, but again, uh, the character that she, or the person that she falls for eventually is her cover model. And he, she can't stand him initially because she has a very specific set of ideas about him. And they go off on an adventure and learn more about each other. So that's, those are the kinds of romances that I'm attracted to. Um. No, okay, 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 okay. Uh, I, then I guess I will take my turn. And so, uh, as Cece pointed out with with the uh, couple of books here, is uh, I I write sort of offbeat romances. And uh, what what what? I'm just making sure you're talking loud enough. La, <laughs> speak from, speak uh, sing from the toes. Um, so um, my idea is that uh, romance is, is, should, is something that should be intertwined in the plot, that, uh, that, there's, that, um, that it's something that uh, hopefully and enjoyably complicates things. Um, but it's something that sort of kind of sneak up, sorry, uh, sort of kind of sneaks up on people 
And um, with uh, the touchy books, that, that didn't, you know, it just sort of evolved. And, um, you know, actually with both books, it was, um, the, the couple sort of just sort of fell into each other um, without, you know, just without that kind of idea. And, um, um, and I think that if I were to had to pick a movie, I was, I'm going to cheat. I'm actually going to pick a series of movies. Um, and it, it's, it, it's going to be the, the Avengers set, starting with um, Captain America, not Iron Man, but starting with uh, Captain America First Avenger and then ending with the Avengers Endgame, where I'm going to go ahead and put forth this uh, feeling, this, uh, this idea, proposition, that the entire set of movies was just one long, complicated method of having Steve end up with Peggy. You know, it's just, you know, everything else happened between, you know, with the snap and everything like that. And, you know, with the battles and the, and the conflict among the Avengers and the city falling from the sky was just a very long path to getting Steve back with Peggy. And, you know, and for, for me, um, with very rare exceptions, um, the, the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Universe after the movies, the Marvel movies after, you know, Endgame haven't really lived up to uh, th that set of movies because um, there just seems like there's something missing. And there was, to me, there was always that tension, you know, Steve, Peggy, Steve, Peggy. And so, um, so yeah. that's just, that's kind of how, how I like to write romances when I do include them in there, is that it's, it's, it's in the framework or it's in the, it's threaded in the blanket, so to speak, but it is not the blanket. Whereas the examples that you pointed out, it is the blanket. Right. It, you know, the relationship between the two main, main characters is just there all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Bo, however, um, using, again, the Marvel Universe as an example, it was something that just kept going going back to, alluding to, uh, right. you know, kind of, as they say, hinting at, and then culminating in it. And I guess we should say we're doing spoilers, and I'll put the spoiler alerts in the, uh, in yes. the text of this. But um, that's, that's, that's how I sort of like to write it, is just sort of, you know, just sort of there, you know, Steve looking at his compass with a picture of Peggy in it, you know, that kind of thing. Well, it's interesting that you say that. So I wonder, does this color the way each of us looks at our relationship? So I see a very distinct through line that basically we are the only couple that I've ever been part of. So in my whole adult existence. I've only had one relationship. And I've only had one relationship in the 21st century. Yeah, we're, we're not going there. It's 22 but, years, it counts. So I think of our relationship similar to the early romances that I read where we met, mm -hmm. you know, we had that exciting relationship development at the beginning. We did have, you know, early in the marriage, <laughs> as most people experience, it's a very challenging time because you're learning about each other and we really didn't know each other. So I always think of our marriage as a romance. Mm -hmm. So everything that has happened during our marriage has been a result of our meeting, you know, where we ended up living, our kids, any jobs I've taken, anything like that. So I consider our life basically to be a romance novel. And, you know, maybe it's not the uh, the excitement of Joan Wilder meeting Jack Colton and, you know, them going off with, though we have had our adventures, maybe not quite that extreme, but I think the through line of our relationship is a romance. So I wonder, are you considering our relationship more like one of your books where it's a you know, your life story, and I just happen to fit into it? Well, you don't just happen to fit into it. You're the, you're <laughs> the main character. But, um, um, and I'm, I'm taking a risk here because I'm about to go into a husband-wife thing where, you know, sometimes <laughs> the husband says something and the wife does one of these. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take that risk and I'm going to say, yeah, that, this, that's how I view our marriage too, is, you know, it's just life as a whole, whereas you are a significant part of it. And, right. Um, you know, the significant part, the significant part, right. but there's, but there's other things going on. And I'm just wondering if that's how our men are programmed too, because we're right. programmed, you know, toward, you know, career and, you know, family mm -hmm. are on different tracks, right. important tracks. Right. And, but uh, for some men, and I'm not saying that women don't do this, but you know, mm -hmm. again, we are people of a certain age. So yes. we have to remember that we were raised in a certain, you know, you know, men in the men in the out world, women in the kitchen. Yes. And so, uh, so here I was, you know, at six thirty in the morning, 
you know, getting on my clothes and walking across town to get my job. So my wife and three kids would have a roof over their head. Right. And so, um, so the romance part, which is take center for you, if, if I understand what you're saying, right, did not happen with me because I had you know the two tracks, you know, right. wife, family, job. So right. it's, um, and maybe that's and so that's reflective, I guess, in my writing. Yeah. That's reflective in my writing. Right. And I'm i just and I want to be clear that there's no right or wrong here. No. It's just you know the way, it 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 has to do with some of the way that we were programmed when we were growing up. Yes. And the the fact of the matter was, is uh, for the longest time I was a sole breadwinner. So right. I, you know, here I am working three jobs yes. at the same time to to keep a roof over our head. So right. um, whereas um, you know you were you, you you viewed things differently, which right. is fine because we're allowed to. So, but again, right. I'm sort of going into that. You know, gee, I wonder how much I can say without the wife going. <laughs> No, because you're absolutely right. And programming is a good way to put it because it took me well into adulthood to realize that I was never programmed to be out in the working world. I was raised to be a wife and a mother, basically. And, you know, my parents, when I was in school, they weren't, um, you know, if I felt like I didn't feel like going to school on a particular day, the whole, oh, I have a stomach ache situation, they were like, oh, sure, fine, whatever. She's just going to grow up and get married. It's not going to matter. And um, it did not occur to me until well into my adulthood that that's what was going on because mm -hmm. I initially, early on in our marriage, I did take a couple college classes, but I hadn't really thought about a career path, even though at that time I was writing and I was trying to get traditionally published to help augment mm -hmm. our income while I was staying home taking care of the kids. But that anybody who has tried to be traditionally published knows how difficult a proposition that is. And I still wasn't um, experienced enough with writing, I guess, to really get past the gatekeepers. I wasn't going to be one of those standout authors. So you're right that it is a lot of programming. It is a generational thing, I'm sure, with us that the man is the breadwinner, the woman stays home and takes care of the house. But in that way, I've looked at our relationship like a romance novel. Yeah, and so that's how it's... Uh kind of ended up in our writing and uh, we'll admit right from the get-go that this is very simplistic this yes. is a very simplistic life is much more complicated oh, yes. than that but you can see how um how romance and programming and everything has ended up in the way of our books mm -hmm. uh but that's of course those are not the only influences and those no. may not even be the base influences they you know the base foundation of what how what we write you know, because of course there's the thousands, literally thousands of books that we've written and been mm -hmm. influenced by. We were influenced by our teachers, both in uh, K-12 and, and in college. I particularly was in, uh, influenced by, uh, you know, multiple Shakespeare classes. Mm -hmm. um, and not to brag or have anything like that, just mentioning influences. Right. But, um, um, and you know, I still tinker with the idea of going back and getting my MFA, but you know, being this of uh, this age, and with other money problems that are coming up, you know, it's it it doesn't make practical sense. But um, but still having that exposure, multiple exposure, and mm -hmm. writing and so on and so forth. That's how it, it, uh, you know we ended up where we are, making the decisions about how to write romance in our books was yes. not a um, was not just one thing. It was a multitude of things. Mm -hmm. So I would say we. In the time that since we have put out from Tundra to Tiara, we have mentioned that we wrote it together. JT wrote the male character. I wrote the female female character. So in this discussion, I think maybe you can see how this book is going to play out based on our real life relationship. So if you're interested in seeing what goes on, maybe you should check this book out. But Absolutely. also it occurred to me that you had your grandparents who were mm -hmm. very literate and your mm -hmm. grandfather was an English professor yeah. and I'm sure all sorts of some influences. of that rubbed off on you as oh, well. Oh yeah, so it's, it's it's not just, and I think every writer can say that. They can't mm -hmm. pick, they can't say, you know, um, To Kill a Mockingbird is right. is the writer that I am today. No, they, they, they can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a multitude of things, but we were focused on the romance aspects yes. to dial this to to bring back. this back in, mm -hmm. and so uh, and yet, so you can see that how we were raised and how we were 
uh, program to exist in the social world and in the work world had an influence on what kind of writers we were of romance. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that was that was good. So uh, so we reach out to the folks that are watching and listening. Uh, how about you? How about you? If you write romance, either write romance as a primary, or you write uh, you include romance in your books, or you don't write romance at all. Now that's what I want to hear. That is interesting. That's what. I, why don't you include romance? Why don't you include love in your books? Because that that would be interesting. Because whether I like it or not, I have to include it somehow. So it ends up in my books somehow. That's right. just that's another spoiler warning. But it's going to end up in my books somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so, but for those that don't think that it's a necessary part, and again, we're not judging. We're just no. curious. Why? Why did you go that route? Um, it, is it because, well, it's because, you know, I write fantasy and all I'm doing is killing dragons. Okay, that's fine. That's a good answer. But that but, can be romantic, too. Yeah, you, you, because when you're killing dragons, you're saving the maiden. But um, but what, what where do you go from there? Well, also, we're looking at romance as a relationship, a love story. Mm -hmm. But there are ways to have a romantic life, maybe where you don't feel like you need to have a relationship. You can create a sense of romance, an atmosphere of romance for yourself. So maybe you don't have a romance in a relationship sense, but you you include romantic elements or something like that. So we're interested in the nuances of what you think is romance, why you do or don't include romance, why maybe you're drawn to romance or you can't stand it. Yeah. Um, as writers, we're curious about many things, especially about how people operate. <laughs> and it's, it's also, is it possible to write a book of fiction without any kind of aspect of romance? That, that's, that's a good that's, question. That's a good question. And then somebody can say, well, you know, did you ever see Lord of the Rings? And then I say, hey, did you see Lord of the Rings? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, think uh, about Eric. All right, so we're giving, you, we're giving you a homework assignment. So if, yep. you, if you're so inclined, reach out to us through our website at www.carsonhume.com and let us know what your feelings are on romance. And, uh, you know, and if you don't include romance, why not? Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up because we're coming up on our time. And uh, honestly, we don't even know if the the, uh, if the podcast is even going to go out. But at least we'll have something on video, right? right. Yeah, yeah, we hope. Hope. Um, well, so, and that's something else we discussed. Um, if you are watching our videos and haven't heard our podcasts, would you be interested more in the podcast version? Because some people do like to listen to those things when they're driving yep. versus sitting at home. So um, we're noticing that we're not getting a lot of hits on our podcasts. But, you know, yeah. which do you prefer? Which yeah. format? Yeah, we actually prefer doing We like doing the podcast just right. because, you know, it's fun. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and call, call it a date next time you see us. It'll be February. We're going to be get, going deeply into Valentine's Day. We're going to be talking more about love and, uh, you know, other similar things. And we'll be talking more about uh, maybe our marketing, our business aspect, if that stuff is interest to you. But uh, for now, sitting over there is CC. And over there is JT. We hope that you have a wonderful week. Again, check us out at www.carsonhuman.com. And uh, until we come back, y'all take care of yourself. Okay, bye-bye.